can't let it get to me. If I let it get to me, how could I do my job? I couldn't. I'd want to take away the guns and save all the children, but I can't. That's not why I'm there. I'm there to take pictures. To tell you the truth, when he told me, I was jealous. I wish we were getting married. What, what kind of man do you think I am? One of those, those creepy middle-aged guys who preys on younger women? I hate guys like that, just because she's young. She delights me. Good. She's fun. Uh, she's, uh, she's light. I discovered I like those things. I missed those things. Then I come along and it's like, who is she? Oh, she must be Richard's midlife crisis. No. Well, I'm not. Okay? Whatever brought us together, we're together. For real. It's not just some passing thing. I love Richard. I'm Deborah Kent, and I'm the director of Time Stand Still. I've directed several other shows at the Guild, um, A Case of Libel, Ravenscroft, Story of My Life, and last season, And Miss Reardon Drinks a Little. Time Stand Still is a, is a terrific script. I liked it from the moment I read it on the Play Reading Committee. It's one of those very concise, crisp, scripts that only gets better the deeper you delve into it. Um, it's basically about four people, a journalist, a photojournalist, and their friend, a photo editor, and his new young girlfriend, Mandy. My name is Cassandra Engber and I'm playing the part of Sarah Goodwin. And this is my eighth show at the Guild. Last year, I was in Miss Reardon. Um, and this is my second Don Margulies play. About 10 years ago, I actually played with my uh, cast member, Alex, in one of his uh, plays as well. Uh, that was called Dinner with Friends. I think Sarah um, has um, a hard shell on the outside. She's been hurt a lot, I think, in childhood probably neglected, one, uh, maybe uh, one of those neglected rich kids. Um, and she found taking pictures as a young child. Uh, photography was kind of her escape, her way of coping with uh, feeling lonely and neglected. And she took it into adulthood. Um, and, but I, I think it, it becomes a protective device for her so that she doesn't really have to feel anything else. Something about it touches her soul. So in some ways it's a good thing, but I think in some ways it's a way of avoiding um, having real relationships with people. My name is Alex Carmichael, and I am playing the role of James in Time Stand Still. This is my third production at this location, and I have several productions at the Old Salem location under my belt. Cassandra and I have done one other show, actually our very first show at the Guild, both of us, on the Salem Avenue location was another show by the same playwright called Dinner with Friends where we also played husband and wife going through some difficulties and it was another four person cast so it's very cool that we're getting to revisit this stage a decade later and a decade wiser. Time Stands Still is a show about pain and cynicism and how a couple deals with incredible changes in their life. Both of our characters are going through a chance for a paradigm shift and we're both dealing with the situation in different ways. James stumbled into his career as a war journalist. He felt it was exciting straight out of college. He didn't want to do the boring old thing. And so he just 
packed his stuff up and went and just started doing it um, with really no idea of what he was doing. But luckily he had some talent as a writer and in the process meeting Sarah while they were both working overseas and they developed a relationship. The things that initially drew him to that profession ultimately aren't enough to keep him in that profession once he returns after going through some pretty traumatic events. Um, not only he going through them, but also witnessing um, his girlfriend going through them as well. And, and he decides that it's time for a change. Hi, I'm David Halloran. I play Richard in Time Stand Still. Uh, Dayton Theater Guild, this is my third production. Uh, I've done some other stuff around town. I was in Dracula and uh, the one with Olives for Future Fest. So, relative newcomer. Richard is a guy who has had a storied past and has somewhat settled down. And now he's on the other side of the lens and uh, does work as a photo editor and um, has a very good relationship with these two uh, people who are a writer and a combat photographer. He cares about them a great deal and has almost a, a parental relationship and feeling toward them. But uh, he, his life has been interrupted by a young, beautiful woman, half his age, and he actually loves her, and she apparently actually loves him. And uh, that is the last thing anybody expected, especially him. And um, he walks into this after a very traumatic incident uh, with one of these people he loves a great deal. And um, it's very, very difficult for him. He has a lot of new emotions going on. Well, I'm Kelly Locker, and um, I've been on this great theater scene for about two years now, almost two years now. Um, I've done a lot of musicals in the area, especially at the Dayton Playhouse, a musical at Sinclair. But this is my first time at the Guild, and I'm very excited to uh, be in this show with Cassandra and Alex and David, and working with Deborah as well. My character is Mandy Bloom, and um, Mandy, they describe her as simple. The playwright describes her as simple and um, sincere, and I just don't think she has a bit of a filter to her. Um, she says exactly what she thinks, regardless of the circumstance, and it is never sarcastic, it's never wavering, and it's always completely sincere, because she doesn't know anything else. Oh my God! <laughs> oh, which one? Mother, this mother crying over her child. Are those, are those birds? Yeah. Is he dead? Oh no, he's in shock. He died a few minutes later. Great shock. How can you be so... So what? That poor little boy. Maybe she would have, maybe if she would have taken him to the hospital instead of taking his picture. Rescue workers were there for that. But how could you just stand there? I wasn't just standing there. That poor boy was dying. He was dying. The boy would have died no matter what I did. And I wouldn't have gotten the picture. You know, I saw this nature thing on TV about Africa. There was a sandstorm. And this elephant, this baby elephant got separated from his mother. It was so sad. I mean, you could see her. She was right there. But there was like a dune. And they couldn't find each other. That poor little guy. He was so lost. And so scared. You know he'll never survive out there without his mother. But the movie people did nothing. Uh, they would like to have you in residence for a year. A year? Oh, well, I couldn't give them a year. Why not? Well, I won't, don't expect to be here in a year. What do you, where do you expect to be? Where do you think? You're not <laughs> serious. You know me pretty well. You don't expect me to sit around for a whole year. If I really work my ass off in rehab, I'll be back by spring. You're encouraging this. Going with her. Are you out of your mind? You almost died. Richard. You had a breakdown. Not a breakdown. You're the Sid in Nancy of journalism. What else has to happen, huh, guys? How many close calls before you say that I'm staying home? Don't get it. You never did. Oh, please. You haven't done enough penance for your trust fund. Okay. When you were in the hospital, 
I have no legal relationship to you whatsoever. Every catheter, every procedure, permission had to come from your father. God, do you know how frustrating that was? I was right there. They had to get him on the phone from Palm Springs. We've been putting ourselves into dangerous situations for so long, we never stopped to think what might happen if one of us got hurt. We didn't have a plan. So being married would make medical management a lot easier? Yes. That has got to be the most romantic proposal I have ever heard. I miss this. Me too. And Liam, I don't want you to see me. Well, I want to see you. When this, but this life-changing thing happens to her, um, she basically loses everything. She almost dies, and and um, I think that it does shake her up, and it does make her reevaluate what's really important. Um, maybe not as much as James. I think each of the characters is like uh, multi-layered, and I, I I feel like they're not one-dimensional; that they have many different sides to them like they're real people. Post-traumatic stress is a very incredibly complex and serious issue that can really fundamentally alter a person for the rest of their lives. As a sufferer of that, he gets to experience it firsthand and what it means to his life and his life together with Sarah and also his life with his friends Everybody's good. It puts a lot of pressure on you, not to suck, obviously, but... <laughs> um, I kind of feel like the newbie, even though I have been around for a while. I'm working with uh, Cassandra and Alex and David. They know exactly what they're doing, and I'm just trying to keep up, and I'm just learning everything I possibly can. One thing I didn't say about this, this play is it does raise some questions, some kind of social questions, and... Um, kind of throws it out there as to what should we be doing in this life. People should come see this show if they're at all involved with current events. They should see this show. If they're involved with any family members in the military, they should see this show. Or anyone serving overseas in any capacity, not even in the military, anyone who has ever been involved in a very serious traumatic experience in their life will recognize themes in this show. I, well, okay, look, the cast is incredible. You're gonna see some top flight acting, uh, which I hope to live up to, and then uh, it's a compelling story. Uh, I think it's moving. Uh, there's certainly a, a humorous element to it. You'll laugh, you'll cry, you'll go home happy. The biggest reason that I would come to see this show if I weren't in it is because of the relationships, and again, how real these characters are and, and how they just don't hold back. I mean, their emotions are just like my emotions as Kelly or Cassandra's emotions as Cassandra. It's real and it's really what would happen and they're going through things that people have to deal with and they are <laughs> dealing with them poorly in some situations and well in others. I think our patrons will enjoy this script a lot. Um, Blake Sensman is doing a wonderful job on putting together a set that not only works, but looks terrific. It's so rich with, with things that fill their lives today. Television screens, you turn on a computer, go on the internet, you see a lot of the war and the violence. And, um, and of course, we see it through the photos and um, uh, other, other means that's brought back to us. And this is what these people do. I think it's a very important play of our time. It's one of those very concise, crisp scripts that only gets better the deeper you delve into it.